Bright Sedgehog. It's basically named after the material in the body. Years ago I wrote an article on trout and salmon. It must be more than ten years ago. And I did a set of flies and basically tied them in colour combinations of traditional mm. flies. It's like a couple of wee changes in it, like the legs and maybe the, the tag, but overall this is much the same. I'll show you how to tie it. Now the hooks I used were uh, the curved hook, I prefer tying them on a curved hook. I just like the shape and to me it sits nice in the water as well. Slight offset in the hook so it hooks extremely well. But if you like the straight hook then nothing wrong with that, it's up to yourself. This is a Gamasan, a B110, it's a grubber, size 10. The thread I'm going to be using is a uni thread, 8 0 and fire orange. I start at the eye of the hook and work my way down. Just a layer of thread. You've got to imagine where you would stop if you were tying in a straight hook. Now, I'm going to stop really just slightly by the, the barb of the hook. Or if you were in a straight hook, it would be in line with the barb of the hook. So Now for the tag, the tag I'm using is a, a medium orange holographic. Now this comes from Vineyards. Just catch it on the side. Take it around the bend. On the original, it was just plain, light bright, gold light bright. But we've got to add a wee bit extra nowadays, we've got all the wee bits and pieces. I remember when light bright came out and we were all experimenting with it. and Some flies fell by the wayside, but these, this pattern, or these patterns seem to carry on. Now what I'm going to do to protect the, the holographic is I'm going to use a, a light UV resin. Now you only need a wee tiny drop, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a tiny drop. And then use your needle or whatever you've got to apply or coat the holographic all the way around. This stops it basically wearing out. And then put your light on. If you find that, see the red especially, um, it goes silver if you don't protect it. Some people like it, some don't. If you want to keep the red, obviously you better to put a coat of varnish or whatever on. In this case, I'm just using the resin. Because it means then I can keep tying the fly. I don't have to take it off and wait for the varnish to dry. That's that done. For a tail, I'm going to use, this is a dyed orange golden pheasant crest. So it's dyed the same, it's a really nice bright. To get the colour, what I do is fluorescent orange first and then a touch of hot orange and that gives you the colour and in the same dye I've got a piece of, this is a piece of deer here as you can see really bright, nice and clean now that's just uh, the belly to remove one of the crest feathers now you can slightly exaggerate with the tail length so you can because it's a deer hair pattern it's up to yourself, you can have it short or long now I usually look for the length of the tail the full length of the hook and then I hold that in my finger and thumb and then come round with a couple of turns, securing it in. Just have a wee quick look. If you feel it's a wee touch long, all you do is hold the ends and then just draw it in to get the length that you like. And that's fine. Trim away the full length of the body. Now there's no rib in this fly, so I quickly run it up, tying in the cut ends of the tail. Just tidying everything up makes everything much easier to work with. And then come back down. Now for the light bright, I'm just using the original light bright that I got. It's from Spirit River. It's, it's light bright gold. And then, just what I do is take out the packet, but I cut it into sort of manageable lengths. Dubbing length, which is around about anything, about an inch and less. Don't get any longer than an inch. Makes it much easier to dub. It's too long and straggly, it just seems to be going and on forever, but when I'm putting on wee drops, you need to have it cut in certain lengths so that it's much easier to apply. And you can up round about 2mm or so from the tail. 
and then get your, in this case I'm going to use dye black, this is a belly as well I didn't dye this one, I bought this one so just remove a few fibres now you could stack it if you want or use an actual curve of the, the fibre which I'm going to do just hold the wing tie it down trim it around about 2 mil from the, the wing because that's where you're going to put some more gold light bright on just using your finger controlling the turns of thread over the cut ends and a wee bit more of the gold light bright just onto your thread slightly spread the deer hair turn or so on with the, the light bright over it just slightly it'll open out the fibres slightly cause it to sit nice and then repeat this, put some more black deer hair on again, just slightly shorter this time, not as the full length, slightly shorter so you get a nice taper and then again just two or three turns in trim tidy up with some tons of thread just slightly spread it, it's fine some more of the gold light bright and then if I remember right the magazine called these flies Mohicans but they're just sedgehogs and now for the front wing I'm going to tie in some of the the orange deer here. Now this thing, I'm going to stack it. The reason I want them, I don't want it too sparse, I want it to really show up. Just put it into the hair stacker. And remove it from the stacker like in the same way you're going to catch it and tie it in so you don't have to change change hands. I know sometimes I forget but we're not perfect. But when you're tying a few you'll get into just uh, bringing it out so that you're holding it the right way. Now, length again, just slightly shorter than the, the D here you've just put on. Catch it down. Nice and tight. Now I've waxed the thread, pre-waxed the thread so it's got plenty of grip. Remove the excess. And a wee bit more. Just run your thread up, tidying, just tidy everything up. Anything going forward with the eye, any wee bits of fibre or anything, just draw them back. See how that's sitting, that looks, that's okay. And you bring some of the light bright out, just catch it with the velcro. That's plenty, you don't need to do too much. Now this is another addition, this is, the original didn't have this but legs are the end thing just now so I'm going to put them on. And this is pre-knotted peasant tail legs, in this case it's dyed black you could use orange if you want, but black I feel just suits this suits this fly, now I'm wanting three either side so all I do is, have it six here, so split it so there's three going either side of the fly just using the wing to separate them the length just to the back of the tail get them to sit right a loose turn or two, tighten up just to make sure they're going to sit in the area where you want them. That's fine. Trim away the waist. And again, tidy up. Now you could finish with that, you could put a wee bit of light bright in the front. Just keep it so it's just more like that. Or what I'm going to do is finish off with a, a badger hackle. And we've got a dyed badger hot orange. Just catch it on the side. Thread down to the eye and I usually just break it off. Keeping the thread tight when you do that. Fold the hackle. Now the, the cape I used is a, a white neck. Um, a nice cape. And I've dyed it a nice hot orange. Two or three turns down, 
fold back the tip, form a nice head. Now you could put jungle cock on the fly, but to be honest with you, there's plenty of things there to attract a fish. Put finish, break off the point, see how things are sitting, and there we are. And that's your. Can I do a brief variant? I mean, very. It's a great fun fly to die. I mean, I've got claret versions here. This is a claret one. And again, but it's got the crest tail. It's a lovely. That's a good pattern as well. There's the olives. There's so on. And uh, basically, the box. The box I'm putting together just now for a for a good cause. And this is starting with the buzzers, working my way down. Just the finer buzzers, but you've got crunchers there. And on this side I've got the claret, uh, the sedge hogs, and obviously this one I've got a few of these to tie. And the other side here I've got some hoppers, as well as some other variants, some CDC versions. So it's going to be a good box when it's full. Then all we have to do is varnish the head. So you drop round about there, all the way around. I usually apply it with a brush. You're looking for a couple of coats. And there we are. Sedge hog. 